Hello mortals. Earth is such a dreadful place to live on, filled with warm beaches, picturesque mountains, rich forests, and penguins. So let's take a look at some alternative paths the evolution and development of a more or less intelligent species might have taken on a variety of different possible worlds, from ocean worlds and super-Earths, to gas giants and eyeball planets. Thanks to Tripleton for sponsoring this video. First up, we have high sea and planets like K2-18b. Massive ocean worlds with thick hydrogen atmospheres are thought to be among the most likely candidates for harboring life, because water and stuff. But what about an intelligent civilization? Well, it is an ocean planet, with no land in sight. There is probably not even a bottom of the ocean as we know it on Earth, instead, after a few hundred kilometers of darkness and Lovecraftian horrors, the pressure just gets so high that a surface of exotic ice forms. This ice layer prevents any interaction between the atmosphere and the planet's interior, halting both the carbon cycle and mineral exchange, making it very improbable for life to get the resources it needs to evolve. If by some miracle intelligent life, perhaps some version of dolphins or octopi develops on such a planet, it would be stuck in the water and have virtually no advanced building materials like metals, giving it no chance to advance technologically. Not the best candidate. Next up, a world where it rains liquid ethane and methane and it is so cold that it freezes a Finnish guy's last percule right out of his mouth. I am of course talking about worlds similar to Titan, which is without a doubt the most interesting moon in our solar system. Any life forms emerging in these conditions would have to be drastically different from what we know to not be frozen solid immediately. But assuming it is possible, what would an intelligent species look like there? First off, morphology. We have no idea how such exotic life forms would work biologically or even whether they are possible, for all we know they could look like this. Technology-wise it does not look too bright either. Fire would be a non-starter, literally, and solar power would likely be infeasible too, since a world similar to Titan would receive only a fraction as much light from its parent star that Earth receives, most of which wouldn't even be able to penetrate the hazy atmosphere. Atomic power could work, but that's a big jump when you can't even start a fire. Any architecture would likely be based on hydrocarbon compounds or water ice, which is rock solid under these conditions. At least computers won't need as much cooling there. Oh, wait, metals are scarce on Titan so advancing technologically to the point of building computers would be about as challenging as building a Dyson Sphere with Lego bricks. But unlike Dyson Spheres, your personal future and that of the Earth are in your hands. Everyone seeks a prosperous, comfortable old age and a better life now. And like you, I'd want to increase my income, advance my career, spend more time with family, and travel more. These opportunities are abundant in emerging fields like tech, and contrary to popular belief, you don't necessarily need a background in engineering starting high school to work in tech anymore. Here is where Triple Ten comes in, our today's sponsor. Triple Ten is a beginner-friendly bootcamp with no need for a prior tech background, a love for building things is all you need. What sets Triple Ten apart is its get a job or get a refund guarantee, and the fact that 87% of its graduates get hired within six months, with some already working at giants like Apple, Tesla, and Google Play. Triple Ten provides real projects with real companies, giving you the experience you need to thrive in the tech world. They also offer unlimited externship opportunities even after you graduate, which means learning from experts by observing their typical workday. So for your first step into the tech world, use the code SCIENCE for 30% off on all their programs. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code for a free career consultation. Hurry up, and we shall get back to our exoplanets. Super-Earths are terrestrial exoplanets with masses up to 10 times greater than that of the Earth. Let's just take the Earth and double its radius and thus quadruple the surface area because we're cool like that. Its mass would be about 10 times bigger, and considering that it would be a little denser, its surface gravity would be about two and a half times that of real Earth. This is comparable to the real exoplanet Kepler-20b. So, assuming that aside from gravity, the conditions on this planet are similar to that of Earth's, and that includes atmospheric pressure, magnetosphere, and elemental composition, what would a human-like species that evolved there look like? For brevity, let's call that species Nagrum. They would likely be smaller than humans, with thicker bones and stronger limbs. 
Humans are built for endurance running, but the evolutionary path of the Nagrim likely would make them only short-distance sprinters since long-distance runs in higher gravity would cost too much energy. The larger surface area combined with slower travel speeds would have an impact on Nagrim's age of exploration too. On the one hand they'd have more stuff to fill their British Museum with, on the other hand, it would take way more to find the samples given the larger planet size. In the end, it might just about cancel out. It's likely that in their modern era, there will be a greater number of smaller countries with greater cultural diversity. The Nagrim, as a result, would probably choo choose trains as their preferred mode of transport, as they would be just as energy efficient for traveling as on Earth, ignoring air friction of course. Air travel will probably be a no-go for a much longer time due to the increase in gravity. But how much more difficult exactly would space travel be? The problem is that the required chemical fuel to get a given payload to orbit increases exponentially with gravity. According to this fun paper, beyond a surface gravity of 8 to 9 g, the entire mass of Florida worth of chemical fuel would be needed to get one ton of payload to orbit. Above 10 g, the rocket would weigh a sizable portion of the planet, and at about 10.5 g, it would need to be the planet. Luckily for Florida, in our example, the planet has a surface gravity of only 2.5 g. Nevertheless, space travel would still be exponentially harder. To launch a single ton of payload to orbit, theoretically, the Nagrim would need a five-stage rocket equivalent to three Saturn Vs. Given that even humans on Earth would struggle with such a project, the Nagrim might outright abandon any space travel plans for an indeterminate amount of time. Perhaps alternative options like propulsion through nuclear fission or fusion would still be viable once the Nagrim are more advanced. Unfortunately, Zero-G would likely cause even more severe health issues for the Nagrim than for humans, as their bodies are accustomed to the constant pull of even stronger gravity. At least they could probably out-deadlift you. How about the opposite of the previous entry? What if humanity evolved on a sub-Earth, significantly smaller than what we are familiar with, assuming it is capable of retaining its atmosphere, as otherwise it's instant game over? With lower gravity, the structural demand on organisms would be less, including less energy consumption when moving around. That would allow for the existence of more slender man-like physiques with less bone density and muscle mass, but it wouldn't guarantee it. But assuming Earth-like compositions, the low gravity might support more massive flying, gliding, or jumping animals. So you could expect human-like species with kangaroo-like legs, wings or gliding membranes, or even a tail for balance. A smaller surface area and faster travel would result in less cultural diversity and more homogeneity, sad British museum noises. The architectural style would likely lean toward taller buildings. Space travel would be exponentially easier too. If the gravity is one half that of Earth, ten times less propellant would be needed. Space elevators might also be viable for lower orbit transport. At least you could probably bench more than they do. What if Earth orbited a gas giant like Pandora from those movies about blue people? Just like with most moons orbiting gas giants, we will assume that this one is tidally locked, meaning one side of the world always faces the gas giant. I'm sure this change won't mess up the ecosystem. Let's also add in an orbital period of one day and no extraordinary orbital inclination. As a result, human morphology could end up quite similar, except for the eyes. Those would be quicker at dealing with abrupt changes in brightness since there would be an eclipse every day as the gas giant passes in front of the sun. Human culture and mythology would likely be significantly influenced by the great circle in the sky, which, by the way, would not move across the sky but remain in one spot due to the tidal locking, so only the people on one side of the planet would be able to enjoy the view, and as a result consider themselves the superior ones. Flat earthers would have a harder time here, as the Earth would cast a shadow on the gas giant during its eclipse too, hopefully a circular one. This still would leave the possibility that a disc-shaped Earth is merely facing the gas giant, but then it would have to appear directly above in the sky everywhere which is not the case with disks. Regardless, astronomers would have a plethora of irrefutable observations for an accelerated itinerary of figuring out that their planet is in fact not the center of the universe, but a grain of dust orbiting a larger grain, orbiting an even larger shining grain, of which there are more than grains of sand in all the deserts on Earth, but still less than reasons to dislike rings of power in the last Game of Thrones season, never forget. Once the civilization would advance to become spacefaring, things would get a lot more interesting, there might be multiple other moons to land on, inciting a longer and more ferocious space race. They might even try to settle the gas giant with balloon cities. 
Speaking of. What if we are not alone on the gas giant? While it seems unlikely for life to emerge there, it could come from elsewhere, such as through panspermia from a habitable moon, and adapted to the gassy conditions. But could an intelligent species arise here? Well, nothing is impossible, though very improbable. In theory, life forms filtering lighter gases like hydrogen or helium from the atmosphere and filling large interior cavities with them could float like balloons, by being hollow and full of hot air like you on a summer night. If those get large and common enough, perhaps even banding together to form clouds or flying islands, other smaller life forms more similar to what we are familiar with could live on them, flying cities drifting wherever the winds take them until life becomes intelligent enough to invent sails or propellers, provided there are body parts of some organisms to build them, because there are literally no other building materials around. The lack of metals will certainly limit how far a civilization can advance on a gas giant. And trying to jump into the depths of the gas giant hoping to find new resources will not work out in your favor. Evolving intelligence requires intense evolutionary pressure in a diverse and dynamic environment, one that gas giants might not provide, but nevertheless, imagining tribes floating on balloon creatures fighting each other would make for a nice show. The following entry is perhaps the most intriguing on this list, which is why it deserves its own video. Most terrestrial planets' inhabitable zones may be eyeball planets, tidally locked to their parent red dwarf star resulting in temperature gradients that make them look like eyeballs, resulting in highly interesting properties, from atmospheric conditions to the way that life would have to adapt. An example would be the recently discovered Gliese 12b, a temperate, Earth-sized planet, 40 light-years away from Earth, atmospheric composition yet to be determined. But that's for another time, and until then, consider discontinuing being tidally locked to a screen, at least until the next science file video drops, and beware of evil penguins. And don't forget to check out Tripleton to headstart your tech career by using the code SCIENCE, for 30% off on all their programs and by getting a free career consultation when clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code.